Hello, it's Catherine from Art Paper Joy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Junk Journal January, day 29. Yes, we're nearly at the end. Today's prompt is musical. So I've got some musical stuff out and I've got a little plan in mind and I thought I'd tell you first about the preparation that I've done and the main materials I'm using. Obviously, I've got some music paper and this is vintage music paper that I've bought loads of music books over the years. So I've got tons of this and I've chosen one with a lot of notes and it's a lovely cream background. So I thought that would go really well. I've used that to put in the photocopier and transfer onto some tissue paper and I put it through the printer to get the copy by pasting it onto some card that goes through the printer easily this is 200 GSM card and I used some of my masking tape and just taped it at the top and taped it at the bottom making sure it was well away from the edge and it goes through reasonably well but you can see I did get some ink runs here and there which you know it's not going to matter then I've got this which is a pianola roll I'm not actually going to use this one because this is beautiful isn't it this is a roll that was used in sort of automatic pianos well they weren't really automatic they were hand cranked and as you open the roll you see lots of spaces and dots and dashes and these are what went through a drum and as you turn the handle of the piano that made the keys moved and it played a tune these wings were really popular I don't know when 1890s something like that and I've managed to get a whole stack of these pianola rolls the paper is fantastic for journaling it's really nice for writing on it's quite sturdy and I'm still experimenting with it but I'm going to put some packs in my shop some physical packs of it and also do a few videos as we go through the spring showing how to use it for all sorts of things but today I'm not using this roll I just wanted to show you that so you know what I'm talking about because I'm using the end of another roll that I've had in my shop and has nearly gone I think there's one pack of mixed ephemera left and I've just got the end piece a few scraps and it wasn't it wasn't as nice as that other one it's just basically plain and it had a little stamp on it so I'm going to use all that I've chosen my page in the journal this is the page that I'm going to use in the journal I've already done a bit of preparation this was a page and this was a page but I've decided to fold that up fold that over and then glue that down to the pink craft page just to make a pocket and then when I do what I'm doing over here I'm going to make a matching tag which will go over there and it's already got the music there I may add some further decoration but that'll come later I'm going to be doing quite a bit of preparation first but this is the overall plan I'm going to make this page look like a piano keyboard so I've already cut some music paper as a base and that's going to fit over there and then I'm going to put some pianola roll paper and then I'm going to put some of my tissue paper with the music on and then I'm going to create the keys using paints and pens so that's going to be interesting <laughs> first of all though I need to create the black keys and that's where the preparation comes in I've got another piece of pianola roll that I've already folded to the right size and I'm going to glue that together and then I'm going to cover it completely with black gesso and let it dry I'm using a PBO black gesso uh, which I think I bought from Amazon and it's not the most expensive brand but I've always found it to be really good now this is really horrible stuff if you get it everywhere so I'm being really careful and I'm holding the brush right at the end You get really good coverage just with one thin coat. I just don't want to touch it. 
because otherwise I'll have <laughs> hands that look, look ridiculous for the rest of the video. I'm not going to put my background on the journal page yet. I'm going to do all the decorating so I can keep this completely flat. The next thing I've got to do is to remove this tissue paper. So I'm going to peel the bottom piece off first because that's smaller. But I realise that I've actually got a really nice print on this tape. So I'm going to try and save that. And the same with the one at the top. I want the music to go this way and I think I'll get quite good coverage so that I get notes on most of the background and then I'm going to make the lines for the keys. So I'm going to paste this down first using my glue stick and then I'm going to trim it around the edge. I've just dried that with my heat gun so that I can get on to the next stage, which is to decide the width of my keys. I have a feeling it's a very odd number. Oh, well, it's 16 centimetres, actually. That's not too bad, is it? So if I did the keys two centimetres wide, I'd get quite a few on there and I could get an even number. Do I want it to start with half a key at the top and the bottom though? Hmm, not sure about that. Or do I want the keys wider? Do I want them three centimetres? Hmm. If I did it two and a half centimetres, I need to centre it up a bit so that the edge two keys are only very slightly wider but then i get one two three four five six keys i need to make the lines quite dark between the keys and i want some shading going on as well and i think i'm going to try first of all my pixma pen which is a brush pen and the tombow pen but use the non-brush end and I've got my water brush handy as well for a bit of blending. If I need to get my black watercolour brush out as well, I can do that. went better than I thought actually. I mean, I'm sure someone else could make it look a lot better but what I wanted to create is the impression of the shadows between the keys. I think it'll all come to life when I put the black keys so it'll really look like a piano keyboard then. I've got my paper that's covered in black gesso which has dried to a really solid black and it's quite matte actually. There's a little bit of a sheen so it looks quite like piano keys. I've got to decide now how wide this has got to be. I think a centimetre and a half. 
or do I want one centimetre? I'm going to do a trial and I'm going to do one centimetre to start with. I think I've got enough to do more keys than I need anyway. So we'll do that first of all. Uh, that's the square end. So I'm just going to square it off and get it to the point that I can use the measuring tool at the other end. And then I'm going to try one centimetre. Okay, now I'm going to try one and a half. I think I prefer one and a half, so I'm going to go with that. I might have that one just for the edge. I'm not going to waste it, but I could put that on the edge and then trim it. I've also got to do the pattern, haven't I? So I'm going to have three there and then miss one and have one at each end. Or I could miss one, have three, miss one and then have two. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I need three. Don't quite think that end one is straight, but I'm not going to worry about it at this stage. Oh, I'm very pleased with that. <laughs> I am very pleased with that. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down. I think I might just ink up these edges with my black so distress oxide. Um, or maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it. Yes, I think I'll just leave it. So yeah, I'm going to glue that down and that is the finished page because I don't think I can add to that. is a great page I love it so it makes this page look a bit sad now doesn't it <laughs> well it has got its bit of music on there but I'll have to think of something to pet this side up a bit all I've done so far is I've glued that piece of tissue paper with the music on it over the pink craft paper I just tore it out and stuck it on with a glue stick. And I think it looks quite nice against the pink. You can still see a little of the pink. I also checked where I got this music from because I realised I have made a copy. And fortunately, it's from a book from 1921. So I am safe in terms of copyright. Now, I am going to put this down as a pocket. But before I do that... I'm just going to try something out that I've been meaning to try out for ages. I've seen it on quite a few other videos. And it was a technique used by Louisa Heinzel in her junk journal January video on the 24th. She did it with circles, but I'm going to do it with a butterfly. I'm going to use this butterfly to ink around and try and make a, a sort of a ghost butterfly. You'll see what I mean when I do it. But the key is to get a really nice crisp edge. So I thought if I try it here, it's going to be partially hidden by the pocket. So it's not really going to matter if it goes a bit wrong. I'm going to have the butterfly wing poking out a little bit. And here goes. I'm going to get it all over my fingers, no doubt. That works quite well. That works really well. 
and it'll just add a little extra to that pocket because I'm going to make a journaling card, an index style one to go in there. First of all, I'm going to use what I've got left on my brush just to antique this up a bit. And because this is this has some music, but it's not all music, I'm going to add a little bit of background with some washi tape. And then I'm going to put another piece of music on here. So it's really musical. It's really difficult to work on this page, which is on such a slope, and have it visible from the camera. So let's see what we can do. I want to have a little bit of each washi tape visible, uh, but I really want to have that visible as well. So I'm just going to trim this a little bit to the top of that piece of stave or whatever it's called. like that better I'm now I'm going to glue the pocket down and I think I'm going to have to clamp this And that's how we're looking at the moment. I think I'm going to just ink up this bit here when it's all dry and then I'm going to work on my journaling card. The page is now dry and the pocket is now dry so I'm going to take the clamps off and yes I feel that it's nice, I really like this page, but it needs a pop of colour and so I've been working on the journaling card I've just cut a piece of music paper which I've doubled up and then I've put the pianola roll scrap that I had left as the journaling space on the back and for the tab I folded that butterfly in half. I think that's a really cool solution to being a tab. I've then just added a bit of that washi tape for a little bit of colour but even when it's in the pocket, it's all pretty much the same, pretty much the same tones. So I've done a bit of fussy cutting and I've cut out this really vibrant pink flower and some leaves. So I'm going to do a little arrangement on the journaling card so this will peep out of the pocket and there'll be a bit of pink there and I am toying with the idea of putting something on this side as well but I'm not sure yet I'm going to try it out first of all though I want to pep up the butterfly a bit and I thought I'd add some of those stickers I made the other day I've got the circular ones out and I want to choose one with some text and just put probably two or three. In fact, I think I'm going to choose three. That's quite a good one. And overlap them. And probably one from there. I think that turns well with the ticket on the washi tape so I like that but now I'm going to do this bit of a collage I'm quite excited about this I want to put the leaves behind and build up layers these were an illustration that were in a totally different order but they wouldn't fit on the card so I am going to rearrange them 
my cutting them apart and then reconstructing the flower. Yeah, I really like that and he can pop out a little bit more and have a bit more of the flower showing without sticking out of the page too much as well. So I've now got to think about whether I want any more pops of colour on this page. I've done some more fussy cutting, I've done some more flowers and I've finally got an arrangement that I'm happy with. I've decided that the card is going to go in the pocket the other way round which is just about possible and stick out like that so the flower is really visible and then I've got these three elements which I've taken from the same book and I've inked this up a little bit so that it's not stark white because that's going in the background and I want that to form a link between the actual background and the foreground which are going to be these flowers I've backed this one onto some card just so it gives that pocket a little bit of extra strength and I'm going to glue these down so I've got a flower bouquet on this side and the piano on the other side I think it'll make a nice contrast we're almost finished I'm just going to add a quote and I'm going to put the details about the date and the prompt and here are the final pages for day 29 of Junk Journal January. And the prompt was musical. I am so pleased with that keyboard. It turned out better than I'd even dreamed it could. So I would definitely be using that technique again. Because actually, it wasn't that difficult. The hardest thing was doing the blending. And even that worked out well. Just putting those black gesso rectangles on there to make the keyboard black notes is fantastic. I really like it. Sort of less pleased with the other side, but I'm glad I've added the florals. I'm glad I've added the colour. And I've got a journaling card in there, which you can either tuck in or tuck out. I found a quote on the internet, of course. When words fail, music speaks. The bit I am least happy with is where I've put January the 29th. I had to add a bit of that extra tape that I'd saved and write that on the top because I actually wrote January the 28th. <laughs> what an idiot. Anyway, I might even cover that up again later. But for now, it's in place and the pages are finished for today. As usual, thanks very much for watching and of course I will see you tomorrow for day 30. But you might be scratching your head a bit and thinking, really? Because that is the last page of this journal. So it's just as well that the prompt tomorrow is unexpected. See you tomorrow. Bye.